Welcome back friends, it's me, Ardalis from Nimble Pros. In this short video, we're looking at how to add simple logging with Serilog to your ASP.NET Core application startup. Typically, this involves a separate logger instance from your runtime logger, and it's likely that your needs for logging at startup will differ from your app's production runtime logging. So it's fine that they may not share the same configuration. In fact, while your primary application logger settings should probably be coming from configuration, it's generally better to hard code your application startup logging so that it's sure to run even if there are problems with how you're reading your configuration when the application starts up. Usually if there are problems when your app starts up, your application logger won't catch them because it's not yet running. That's why it makes sense to configure a separate logger specifically to wrap your application and its startup. Let's get started. All right, for this example, I've gone ahead and created a simple web API project. You can see right here, I just did .NET new web API and then output that to a nimblepros.log startup folder and project. So far, I haven't made any real changes to this except to add a couple of console write lines. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like when we run it. All right, so here's the output when we first run this application. And you can see that we've got our starting up and our total services at 126 there at the top, but they don't look the same as the rest of the log output. And we can't really easily configure that to go anywhere else. Like if we're trying to log to uh, an Azure or AWS provider or Seek or any other type of structured logging. So the console write line is kind of your, your entry point level logging, but it's really only good for localhost development stuff. We're going to want to use a real logger and my preference is to use Serilog. So the first thing we're going to do is install some NuGet packages. I've already installed them, so I'll just show them to you. If we search for Serilog here, you're going to see that I have Serilog.ASP.NET Core, configuration, and the console sync setup. Serilog uses syncs as places where it can output your log data. And the console is a, is a pretty common and obvious one that you're going to want to use, especially at development time when you want to see what's going on. Now to replace our console outputs with Serilog, we're just gonna make a few small changes and we're gonna set up a logger that's just for use inside of program.cs. All right, so you can see that uh, Copilot is helping me out and giving me the basics of what this logger might look like. I'm gonna change my minimum level here to be information, so it's maybe not quite as verbose. Pretty much it's only gonna spit out stuff I tell it to though. So if I'm not putting anything that's debug in there, it's probably not gonna show any debug output. Now to replace that console log with my own log information, I'm gonna use log.information. And then let's see what that looks like. All right, so the very first line is now coming from Serilog instead of from console.writeline. We haven't changed the other one yet, so you can see kind of the difference in appearance. It's pretty minimal, but it does show the, the time and that it's an information message inside the Serilog output. Now let's take advantage of that structured logging. I've left in the console write line just so you can see the obvious difference. By default, Serilog's console output is going to color code any of the structured values that we pass into it. In this case, it's an integer with the number of services being 126. This really helps those to jump out at you when you're scanning the logs quickly. The other thing about it is in the usage, you can see that it was much simpler for us to just pass in that value than to have to convert it to a two string. Also, if we are gonna look at this in an actual structured log viewer, we'd be able to search for instances of the word count in our structured log, as opposed to in the console write line, it's just a string. And if we want to see the word count, it's not gonna be a strongly typed parameter to that log message. It, we're just going to see whatever was spit out, you know, like total services or something like that. Okay, but one of the things you're going to want to know about inside your app startup is when something blows up. So let's create a small example of something that might fail. Usually configuration is one of the key areas where things don't get set up correctly and you want it to blow up at startup. And so let's show an example of how to do that real quick. I'm going to add an options class for weather options since the API here is all about weather forecasts. We're gonna give it a forecast days, and we can mark this as required, although I'm not actually using that at the moment. Some other approaches to this will take advantage of that though. And then I'm gonna add a method here that's going to load and validate that and throw an exception if it isn't set up correctly. And that'll include verifying that it's within a certain range. 
So you can see that check right here to say the days has to be between one and 14, right? Can't be more, can't be less than those values. So with this in place, let's go ahead and add this into our configuration. And then we're going to run it again. And here you can see that it just runs. It doesn't actually do anything. But I don't actually have any of this configuration set up in appsettings.json or an environment variable or anywhere else. So it's not actually validating anything yet. Here's my appsettings.json. Again, you can see nothing in it yet. So now let's add that validation. And we'll run it again. And now at this point, you can see that we do have an unhandled exception. Uh, we are getting a, something that tells us the value can't be null, this parameter section in load and validate. And so that's, that's helpful, right? Now we know we need to add this thing. But notice that the exception output is just standard console out. It's not using our logger. So we want to address that if we can. It's going to be important if we want any of this to go somewhere other than the console that we have that going through Serilog. So that if we added additional syncs and we wanted it to email this or log it to a file or whatever it might be, that this data would get into those logs. So in order to capture that exception, we're going to use a, a try catch block around most of our program.cs code. We're going to keep the logger configuration out of the try block, and that'll be about the only thing we put ahead of it. All right, and you can see that uh, Copilot is helping me out here again with the uh, catch. We're going to do a log fatal if something happens with an exception, and we're going to pass in the exception to that log output. So without changing anything else, we've just added a try catch. We're going to go ahead and run it one more time. And now you can see that we have a red highlighted fatal log message coming out, telling us that it failed unexpectedly and then still showing us that same argument exception. But now this is going through the logger, which means if we do configure this to go to another sync, we'll see that data in that sync as well, not just in the console. All right. So if we want to make this work again, we just have to add a section in here for the actual configuration. And so that might look something like this. We're going to have a weather section uh, with a forecast days and we'll make it 15 just to have that still get an exception. We run that and you see we get a different fatal error telling us the configured value 15 must be between one and 14. Of course, if we want to make it work, we just need to get it into the right range. And now everything runs the way you would expect. And we could hit the endpoint and see the weather forecast that you get with the basic template. So the basics of what you need are just a few NuGet packages and then this configuration that you see on the screen to get started. If you want the actual sample code, there's a link in the description that'll let you grab it. Thanks again. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, share it on social media. And if there's things that you'd like to see, either questions about this video or this topic or new topics that you want me to cover, leave a comment in YouTube and I'll add it to my backlog of, of things I want to post a video about. Thanks. Keep improving.